Hello, hello, everyone. All right, just want to make sure I did all this correctly here. <laughs> okay. I don't know that I had the right microphone hooked up here, but we're going to see if I can check it. The YouTube backend is really kludgy on this live stream stuff, so I just got to make sure that I have it right. <laughs> um, Rachel's taking care of some family stuff at the moment, so you just get me for now. She might join a little bit later, but we're going to see if I can hold my own. I don't know if I feel comfortable ad-libbing a Q&A style video for extended periods of time by myself, so we'll have to see how this goes. <laughs> Does the audio seem okay? I'm all paranoid about it. I don't know if it's like picking up okay, but if it sounds good to you all, then I'll go with it. You can hear me. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for the hair compliments. The COVID hair is still going strong. I have not gotten a haircut of any kind. I've trimmed my sideburns a little bit myself, but it's getting pretty luscious back here. It's getting getting kind of real. We can really we can really do some cool stuff with it now. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, gotten some good questions. Are we shipping now? Yes, I'm going to be addressing that. Um, we are shipping. Um, so we'll get into that. Let's see here. All right. All right. Sadman says, hope you're both good and well. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to record a new episode. I'm happy to do it. It's a little, it's a little late. I'm not as tired this week as I have been some other weeks. Um, but I really worked a lot today. Like I did not take much time off. So we're going to see how my stamina holds up. It's a little crazy. I got some like permanent bags under my eyes because <laughs> it's just where I'm at these days. But anyway, still having good fun. Yes, you're at the Gula kitchen table. Technically, it's our dining room table now. But anyway, this has been our table. This is where we were shipping orders over 10 years ago. We were packing orders on this very table. So this table's got a history with Gula Pen Company. All right, let's see here. Da -da -da -da. All right, let's see here. All right, hello, hello. I'm catching up on comments. Without Rachel here, I got to read and talk at the same time. I'm a terrible multitasker. So we're going to see how it goes. Elizabeth Moon says, so glad you're carrying Sailor again. Just ordered. Congratulations and thank you. Oh, you just ordered Haha. -ha. <laughs> I thought you meant like just ordered Haha, -ha, but no, Haha -ha, Ink. <laughs> Very popular ink. Uh, so good. I'm glad you got some. We did get restocked on that. I'm not sure what our stock is at the moment, um, but anyway, it's been a very popular ink. So, so glad that you're enjoying that. Um, Aisha's liking the hair. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, Javier says, uh, are you shipping now? So yes, we are. I had a couple things about shipping that I did want to touch on. Um, we actually did a post on Gulay Nation. Rachel did a post on Gulay Nation today because um, uh, some people noticed that uh, they were getting, um, you know, some shipping notices for, for stuff that's gone out. So as of right now, we're we're shipping stuff that came in early April. So we're, we're pretty behind um, because we basically took about seven weeks off from shipping due to um, the stay-at-home orders that we have in our state and just trying to get proper procedures in place at our office. So we do have people back in the office shipping again. Um, we got three or four people at a time that are shipping there right now. Um, that whole team normally we have more like seven or eight. So we are still not at capacity and we are trying to catch up for many, many weeks off. So it's going to take us a little while, but we're looking probably about a month from now will be pretty much back on track. So we're gonna be we're gonna be behind for probably the next month. Our team's working super hard. Um, and I wanted to explain just a little bit about some of the processes that we have in place, just to maybe give some context as to why some orders might be shipping, some might not, it can be a little confusing. Um, so basically we have some procedures in place that we've had to implement due to some of the COVID stuff. Um, you know, it used to be that we would have certain people pulling orders and they would hand it off to people who would be packing orders. So like there was a touch point there between orders. We've changed that process so that now um, the same person is pulling orders as is also packing them up and shipping them out. So that has slowed things just a little bit, um, just not having that handoff because there's a little lack of efficiency in that process, but it does keep um, everything, you know, contained. So there's no potential whatever exposure and interaction there with different team members. So they are kind of staying more isolated with each other. Um, and then uh, some other things that, that that can impact is 
you know, everybody's, we've got people that are watching their kids, they're working in split shifts, they're not working every single day. Um, so what's happening is people are pulling their own orders and they might be sitting there for a little bit on the table until maybe they do their next shift. So that could get things a little bit out of order. It could be maybe two days before their next shift, depending on how the schedule works out. So that can affect things. Uh, the other thing that can really make a difference is um, the shipping class, right? So it's a lot more efficient for us because we have different packing stations. For example, like FedEx uses completely different packing supplies than USPS. So we will batch together different shipping methods um, and ship all those at the same time. So that can get things out of order. You're waiting so patiently, Ellie, but let me let me finish this up. And then you can come I'll be okay. your fan. Okay. Okay. Like all yells. Ellie's Stuff waiting like, here. You have good hair. Thank you, dear. All right, try not to hit the table, okay, because it bounces the camera. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, so what else have we got here? So the shipping class definitely makes a big difference. Um, and those are kind of the big ones. I think I'm leaving something else out. Rachel had one other, one other point in her post that I thought was good, and I'll see if I can scan that. Um, yeah, we have fewer people in there, staggering shifts. Um, oh, the other thing is, like, sometimes there could be um, – you know, a, uh, uh, an order that needs to be set aside um, because we're our receiving has been staggered and stuff. We haven't pre-sold anything. Um, we've tried not to oversell anything. Ellie, can you please wait just a minute here so I can keep my train of thought? <laughs> um, so we have not uh, had, you know, a lot of issues with actual oversells, but we do have a lot of things because we're not downstocking quite as much. We're not replenishing the shelves in the same manner because we don't want to have more than one person in an aisle at a time. So we might have an order that needs to be set aside and investigated. Like it could be that normally that product is barcoded and um, the person that normally does the barcoding isn't in the office until the next day. So just there's things like that that could be, you know, impacting things, you know, if it's came in receiving, but it hasn't been put onto the shelf yet, you know, in order to keep the distance and because we have so many people working in various shifts, um, it's slowing things down a little bit. So there's a number of different things that are almost making it impossible for us to predict which orders are going to end up, you know, getting delayed by a day or two. But just in case, you know, you're seeing posts on Gilead Nation or anywhere else online where somebody says, oh, I ordered on whatever, March 28th and it shipped and somebody else is like, well, I ordered on March 26th and mine still hasn't shipped. What's going on? Could be any multitude of things. I think we got all the March orders out anyway, though. That was a bad example. But <laughs> uh, so team's still working really hard, trying hard to catch up, but we're having to do that balancing out all the things and safety being number one priority. So there you go. I think we got through that question. Okay. Well, my daughter is coming in. So I get so distracted with her. Oh my goodness. Okay. We got a lot of other really good questions. So I'm going to try and just hit as many as I possibly can. Oh my gosh. There's already more questions that I can answer in this entire episode. So we're going to see how it goes. Oh, uh, let's see here. When will you be getting the Sailor Pro Gear Slim Minis? Charlie asks. Um, so those are going to be coming relatively soon. I don't remember the exact date. It's going to be a, a few weeks away, I think. Um, relatively soon though. So we started getting asked about those, you know, and, and they've been discontinued in the U.S. for like 10 years. Um, but it just so happens they were already planning to bring them back in. So we really had nothing to do with it. Um, all we, we inquired about it, and I think it was already in the works. And then we just got noticed that they're going to be coming. So that's going to be happening here soon. Um, and we're very excited about that. So if you're, you know, the only downside of that is it's it's so small, it doesn't actually take a converter. So it's cartridge only. Kind of a womp womp, but, you know, there we go. Has Ellie tried to braid my hair, Susan asks. No, she's not tried to do that, but just about everything else. Um, any suggestions for a pen for my wife? She holds it completely vertical. Um, I think uh, Japanese pens are going to be a better bet for that because they tend to hold their pens more vertical too. Completely vertical is a little rough because fountain pens don't necessarily work the best when they're completely vertical. Um, but I would try and go with maybe a slightly larger nib size just to give you a little bit less uh, scratchiness because whenever you hold it really vertical, it's going to be a little bit scratchier for you. So I'll try and go with like a medium or a broad maybe. Um, I know, for example, the Pilot Vanishing Point stub nib um, does really well when it's held more at a vertical angle, as does the Platinum uh, Music Nib. The Sailor Music Nib doesn't do as well when it's completely vertical. Um, it's got to have a little bit of an angle to it. Um, but most of the Japanese pens are going to do pretty well in a vertical position. 
Uh, what do you think about Nakaya pens? I think Nakaya pens are beautiful. Um, I don't have a whole lot of experience with them. They are not something that's available to us as a seller. Um, there is an exclusive with them in the U.S., uh, online at least, um, through nibs.com. So they have a longstanding relationship with them and good reputation and stuff. So, um, you know, I've been able to see them in person at pen shows and in various places. Um, craftsmanship seems good. Quality seems good. Some interesting Yurushi designs. Um, other than that, I don't know a whole lot about them other than they're, they're kind of hard to get cause they just don't make that many of them. Uh, what do you think of the platinum Terran Terran? not familiar with that. I'm failing to call recall what that is at this time. Sorry. Some. All right. Let's see here. Sean says, yay shipping. I got a message today for my order from April shipped. This is a birthday present. So I'm super excited for it to arrive. Oh, well, happy birthday, Sean. That's awesome. <laughs> Brandon, make yourself some pigtails. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> All right. Do you think this coronavirus crisis will permanently change anything about the way you operate? Survivor guy asks. Um, I mean, undoubtedly, this has been such an impactful global thing. It's going to change a number of different things. It's hard to say exactly what it's going to change permanently. For sure, I think certain like cleaning procedures and just the way that we, you know, kind of operate with each other physically in the building, you know, because we have a fairly open floor plan in our office. And um, there's certainly, you know, from a culture standpoint, we want people to be mingling with each other and bumping into each other and saying hi and these types of things. Um, so that's going to that's gonna feel a little different for quite a while. Long, long, long term, is that going to make a huge difference? I don't know. But for sure, we're going to be, um, you know, a little bit more diligent about um, if people aren't feeling well, it's very much going to be like, well, don't even come in. Just stay home. <laughs> you know, we know how to work from home. You know, we have a lot more procedures in place for working remotely. So I think the the, the inclination to work remotely, it's going to be much more of a go-to, whereas previously it might have been a little more difficult. Um, certainly things like snow days and extreme weather and stuff like that is going to be far less scary than it has been in the past um, after we've gone through all this. So, um, you know, those are going to be the most obvious things. Um, that we're going to have feel immediately. Uh, Carol says, Randall did an excellent job packing, by the way. That's awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. Randall's awesome. He's been with us a long time, almost nine years. He was uh, hired a week before we moved out of our garage. <laughs> All right. So Chris Ferguson says, if I make an order today, when would it ship? You know, that depends. Um, and of course, if you're in like an emergency type situation and you need it to be at expedited, we can make exceptions, you know, of course. Um, you know, but I would say probably we're three to four weeks out, uh, you know, uh, for, at this point. It's, it's hard to say exactly because um, a lot can happen in a month, but that's that's probably about where we are on track. Um, love the art of you and Rachel. <laughs> Which little is the artist? Um, so this one over here, Ellie did, our daughter, she's eight. And this one over here, Joseph, Joseph did. He's our son and he's 10. So they're both little artists. They like to draw and they like to do all kinds of fun stuff. So we encourage that, obviously. All right, uh, just got my order today. Uh, so happy to get some supplies just in time as my notebooks are running out. Thank you so much to the team. Please stay safe. And I hope you appreciate you keeping your employees safe. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Ray Pid. All right, let's see here. What else we got? Um, Jeff says, received my Retro 51 cat pen. Thank you, Brandon B, for the nice note. That's awesome. Um, I've actually find it faster just to read the question for the first time as I'm reading it. So sorry if it seems irrelevant, but anyway, <laughs> I'm going to read comments, questions, everything, because without Rachel here, I'm just um, flying solo. All right, Jeff says, received my Retro 50. Oh, no, I just read that one. <laughs> Bob, Bob Wides. Um, will you start to carry narwhal pens? How do you decide what to carry? So the narwhals, those are the newer noodlers ones, right? Um, so I don't believe that those are available yet widely in, in any type of distribution. So, um, or no, narwhal, oh, I'm failing to remember. It sounds like a noodlers pen. Maybe that's not a noodlers pen. My brain is scrambled. Um, narwhal, sorry, no, that's not a noodlers pen. That's a whole different brand. It's coming back to me now. I believe I looked at them at the DC pen show last August, which feels like a million years ago at this point. Um, so how do we decide what to carry? Um, it's a whole it's a whole process, but basically our, our whole new product process has been disrupted pretty severely with all the stay at home stuff. But normally we have a team that helps to uh, make those decisions. We take input from, from any, mem any member of our team, but we have sort of a, a new products team, if you will, um, that's comprised of you know maybe five or six of us in, in, our, in our core. 
Um, Rachel's the final decision maker on which new products we bring in. Um, there's a lot of components to it, especially if you're talking about an entirely new brand, because there's all this logistics and support and everything like that that goes into the operational side of carrying a new brand, which we have to take seriously into consideration with anything new that we carry. Um, so, you know, there's no one decision that makes that for us. It's just 10 years of experience with a bunch of people in the room and all kinds of things about, you know, do we have the capacity, time, money, interests, demand, supply, all this stuff. So it's a multitude of different things. All right. Um, Elizabeth says a reply from Brian. I'm honored. You're very welcome, Elizabeth. Happy to do it. That's why I'm here. All right. Uh, Sadman says, will you ship internationally? Absolutely. Every day. Every day. As long as, you know, it's a place that can be shipped to. I will say with all the COVID stuff that's gone down, there are more countries that um, we are unable to ship to. And we have those listed on our website. Um, but the USPS, especially if you're shipping USPS International, which is the, usually an economical way to ship it, um, what ends up happening is sometimes with all this stuff and, and you know, increased delays through customs and all this kind of stuff, um, infrastructure that's kind of broken down through all this, um, there have been a number of countries that have said we can't even receive mail. So they just, they've told USPS that they just, they won't even let the mail into the country. Um, so when we know about that, we update it on our website and you can see that. Uh, Greg says, got my pen today. Thank you guys. That's awesome, Greg. Yay. Um, so you don't know how much it warms my heart to hear you guys are actually getting your stuff again. That's so great. So great. Oh man. Uh, so Liam's pen video says for the holidays, uh, you did free U.S. shipping and ten dollars off for international. Is there a diff discount for international now? Uh, not right now. There is not. Uh, that was a compromise that we had to make, unfortunately. And I'm sorry for that. Um, Rachel could explain to you some of the technical aspects of that, but there was a technical reason that why we couldn't offer that, that we couldn't work through, and we just didn't have the time and the developer time to work through that to make it happen in time to go uh, to make that happen for the COVID uh, kind of shutdown situation. Um, so there is no currently no, no international discount related to the free shipping deal that we have going on, but there could be in the future, like potentially. It just wasn't for this one. Um, Fantastic Life says, any new stickers? You know, honestly, we did consider wanting to do, we really intended and wanted to do a special sticker design to celebrate everybody that was supporting us during this time. It's possible we could still do it or still do something. But the problem was that a lot of these sticker companies, a lot like every place that we had ordered from basically was based out of somewhere like California or New York, whatever, that was like in serious shutdown. And they were not taking any orders uh, or, or they were seriously delayed or it was like delayed indefinitely, kind of like the situation that we were in. And so I was like, well, okay, well, if we order these stickers specifically to include in the orders that we want to, we want to thank everybody right now. They might not come until after all those orders have shipped. So that was a big challenge for us. We ended up having to abandon that project though. The, the intention was there. The thought was there, if that counts for anything, but basically we weren't able to order any new supplies for anything before we were going to start shipping out. And it didn't make sense for us to hold on to orders any longer just to get something else in there. So unfortunately that's where we were at. Uh, Sandra says, do not buzz the hair. <laughs> I definitely won't buzz it. I, I literally don't know what I'm going to do with my hair. Um, it's getting to be warmer and it definitely gets hot. <laughs> I've never, I've not had my hair this long since middle school. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes, but I'm not going to buzz it. Matthew asks, is everyone staying healthy? So far though, my son had a bit of a stomach ache tonight and we're kind of like, oh, I don't know. Is he just eating a lot of junk food during the day? Because that's very possible. Or I don't know. He has, they've been staying up until like, 12 o'clock. <laughs> Some nights they were at like 1130 and I was like, seriously, guys, go to sleep. This is where we're at. So, um, but everybody's been, been okay so far. I think he might just have a little too many snacks in the belly. All right. Um, Katie says, what makes the new Twisby 580 ALR different from the Eco and how do they compare with the VAC 700R? Thanks. Um, gosh, there's a bunch of different things. The biggest one with the vac is that it's a vacuum filler, right? That's a larger pen that fills with this big piston vacuum in the back. That one's pretty different. 
Um, and I know I have several videos comparing different Twisbees. I'm failing to remember the exact titles of them, but look on our YouTube channel. We have a number of Twisby videos. Um, difference between the ALR and the Eco. So um, the ALR is going to be slightly bigger, slightly heavier, a little bit higher in capacity, though the Eco is pretty good, honestly. Um, it's got uh, a, like a diamond kind of faceted body instead of a straight round one. Um, so a lot of people just think that the 580 looks a little, you know, it's got a little more whatever design to it. Um, you know, they just like the look of it better than the Eco maybe. The, honestly, the Eco is such a great pen. I'm a huge fan of the Eco. Um, but it's just not to everybody's liking. So the, the 580, they like that better. But they're both piston fill pens, stainless steel nibs. They write pretty similarly. The nib is slightly different, slightly larger on the 580, but they write fairly similarly. So just, you know, the differences are nuanced, mainly aesthetic differences, I'll say. I hope that helps. All right, Clifford Baker. Yes, my order arrived on Monday. Sailor 1911. It's beautiful and writes like a dream. Thanks, you guys. Awesome. Yeah, so like we we stopped shipping like right as we launched Sailor. Just like the worst timing ever um, after we'd been planning for forever. So uh, this is how it goes, right? So I think now a lot of the first orders are shipping out are Sailors. So you're going to start to hear a lot about Sailors in people's hands. Um, Kenda says, when do the Sailor Minis come out? Saw them on your website is coming soon. I'm so excited. I already answered this, but in case so I'm very behind on my questions now because I'm talking too much. Um, <laughs> let's see here. They are coming out in a couple of weeks. I don't have an exact date yet, but it's, it's going to be relatively soon. Um, again, all, all order, all timelines that we have right now are fluid because there are so many disruptions to the distribution chain from you know stuff that's got to come into the US and go through customs there are shipping lanes that are delayed in terms of international like sh like transit there, there's all kinds of delays in terms of air freight because there's not as many commercial airliners that are flying and a lot of times they will use commercial airliners to actually haul mail and stuff like that so if you're wondering why sometimes the mail gets pretty wacky that's why is because there's now not as many commercial airlines flying because of all the virus and stuff and so many airlines shutting down that um, that's really disrupted the, the delivery packages internationally, uh, especially. Um, and then of course there's just delays all over the place in ground transportation too. So a couple of weeks away, that's all I got. Um, let's see here, an ink guy just received my order from Goulet Unicorn Blood Ink, fun ink, good stuff. Um, okay, Sum says, did you check out the Twisby Contra? Twisby Contra. I might have seen that, but the name is not recalling anything to me. So I'll have to get my memory jogged on that one. Um, let's see here. Thank you for keeping in touch. This is great. Please bring the Goulet Pen uh, Credo, Company Credo postcards. You truly love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Online chats at Goulet have been fantastically helpful as usual. Aisha, so glad to hear that. Our team is awesome. Um, Andrew says, love the hair appointment you show off. You're very welcome. Uh, or thank you, sorry. <laughs> I'm saying you're welcome for my hair. That's how arrogant is that? All right, let's see here. The RBY4 says, how would I go about being, or, or RB, RBYIV, I don't know. Anyway, how would I go about being notified when the infant calendar is in? I have a feeling stock won't last long. Uh, as of right now, there is no infant calendar that I know for sure is coming. We've encouraged them to do one. I don't know if they will. They're taking the different colors from last year's infant calendar and making them into full bottles. That I think we're still a few weeks away on. So I don't really know other than, you know, getting notified through email there's nothing really else to do with that because this is we've given such an in 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 perfect timeline on that stock won't last long i think that'll be okay that i have no idea i just have no idea i don't know how much stock we're getting or anything so it's a good question just try to stay on it um okay let's see here oh adrian's in here hey Adrian. adrian's answering questions for me i'm just now getting to that okay that's super 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 behind want to say hi ellie hi oh you want to put some necklaces on me all right it's that time of the broadcast her Ellie makes me pretty. Oh, this is just the beginning. Oh, is it now? Yeah, I haven't gotten the bows and bracelets yet. Awesome. All right, dress me up. I'll keep answering questions. All right, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you having all these side conversations in here. That's awesome. All right, Elizabeth says, I have a sailor ink I got when I first got into fountain pens as part of the gentle ink line, and I can't find it anymore. I think I got lucky. Great ink. 
though. Uh, Elizabeth, the gentle inks are back. So they were discontinued for a little bit, but now they were brought back. I think they're a North American exclusive. But anyway, we have all the gentle inks um, that we had several years ago. So check those out on our site if you are curious. Um, okay, John says, I don't like the Rhodia either. Same with the Claire Fontaine. Is it too, sorry, I might've missed that comments. Too smooth, that's probably, that's, that's probably where it's coming from. Don't understand why, so, okay, here we go. Lola says, I don't understand why so many people love Rhodia for fountain pens. I find it makes my ink look darker. It's absorbent, it makes my pens feel scratchy. I just don't get it. Uh, Lola, I'm curious what paper you're using that you like better than Rhodia, because Rhodia is kind of like, a bit of a gold standard for, um, you know, popular fountain pen ink. Now I will say, it depends on what paper you're using because not all the paper that is used in every Rhodia is identical. So I am curious as to hear which it is, but the Rhodia like white 80 gram paper is very, very consistent and has been for 10 years. Um, and that is pretty tried and true. Um, oh, here we go. So Psy Chameleon says, or Shy Chameleon says, Lola, what paper do you like? Let's see if Lola responds. I'm like literally catching up. I prefer 52 gram, but love all of it. Cream white, plain lined grid. 52 gram, that seems like Tomo Way, which Tomo Way is an impossible standard for anybody else <laughs> to meet in terms of smoothness and stuff like that. Tomo Way River, yeah. So that's really good for sheening. A lot of people hate Tomo Way because the dry time is so long. So it's really to each their own. Um, you know, so I would say, Rhodia tends to be a really good all around paper for everybody, good compromise between smoothness, um, ink absorbency and uh, dry time. Uh, though some people hate it because they say it takes too long to dry and it feels too smooth, go figure. Um, okay, what's your system? Barb says, what's your system for rotating your personal use fountain pens? My system is not really a system. <laughs> I really don't have a set system, definitely nothing that you should emulate. My system is I ink it up when I get excited about inking it up. I wait way too long to clean it out. And then I have to do like a full restoration clean every time that I <laughs> have to clean it. That's my system. I fill way too many pens. And then half the time they end up drying out before I actually use them all, all the way through. And uh, that's my system. So it's a pretty terrible system. But that's my system. Anyway, in fact, I think I have I think I have a bunch of pens. No, I had a bunch of pens that I needed to clean out. I brought home from my office when we started the whole remote working thing that I needed to clean out. And I think I waited like six weeks before I actually cleaned them out after I was home. The problem is I have too many pens that are already clean. So I don't have to clean the ones that are inked up. So I'll just like, eh, let me just grab this other one. And then I wait too long. Anyway, that's my system. Okay. Let's see here. I'm getting all out of order now. I scrolled too far and started answering stuff out of order. Okay, y'all are all talking to each other. That's good. That means I'm definitely taking too long to answer the questions when you're answering questions for each other in the chat. But I, I like that. I encourage that. All right, let's see here. What about Leuchtsturm um, in terms of paper? Yeah, that's that's a little more absorbent, a little less smooth than Rhodia, but still um, you know, generally accepted, pretty acceptable fountain pen quality paper, which is why we have it. Um, thoughts on using red ink and a higher end pen. Why not? Go for it. I'm assuming you're going to say it's because, you know, it's probably maybe a little more prone to staining or, or clinging or something like that. It really depends. It seems like there's certain like red dyes and stuff like that that could be in red or purple or pink inks tend to get a little clingier. You know, honestly, what it all boils down to is these are fountain pens. These are writing instruments. They are made to write. If pink ink or red ink or whatever makes you happy, you use it in whatever pen you want. I don't think you need to like steer away. And it's up to you really. Like if you don't want to use it because it's, you're worried about a staining, stick that in your Twisby Eco or whatever and, and use your reds there and your heart's content, content and stick to the, you know, the safer stuff for your higher end pens. Me personally, I use whatever in whatever pen I want. And maybe it's just because I have a lot of experience cleaning pens and I'm just not as nervous about like permanently doing anything to them. You know, the only ones that I'll kind of avoid, like organics, you do the nitrogen gets everywhere. The new those base states are a bit of a pain. You know, everything can be cleaned. It's just a matter of how much work do you want to do to get it clean. So that's the only thing I would say is um, it's more a matter of inconvenience than it is about like any permanent damage. So it's really up to you. It's, it's kind of a personal choice. All right, let's see here. Da, 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 da. All right, so scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. All right, let's see here. <laughs> K 
Kaylee, forgive me if I say that wrong, pretty, pretty princess Brian. Hey, you know what? I got an eight-year-old daughter, and I'm not afraid to dress up like a princess. Um, let's see here. Will chicken stickers be back, Nancy asks. Um, we don't have any plans at the moment. You know, we designed them. We could bring them back if we wanted to, but we don't currently have any chicken stickers. And just like I mentioned earlier, the, a lot of the sticker place, I believe I just got an email like two days ago from our sticker supplier saying that they are now back open to regular stickers. So part of the reason you're like, why are sticker makers, you know, all this, whatever. So a lot of the sticker companies, I believe, were um, either in like a shutdown kind of capacity or more limited capacity, or several of them were limited to essential only printing. So they were think about all the hospitals and essential stores that needed to have signage and window stickers and the things on the floor saying where people need to stand distance from each other and all that stuff. All of those stickers had to be printed up by somebody. So a lot of these sticker suppliers and, and printers and stuff like that were open only for essential purposes and prioritizing, you know, the essential businesses, which a fountain online fountain pen supplier is in, in, in their terms, not an essential business. So <laughs> just for context there. Anyway, chicken stickers, when are they going to be back? No, no plans at the moment. Right now they're just living in history. Okay. Let's see here. Oh gosh. Where are we going? Hang on. I'm getting there. I scrolled too far. Lost my track. I think a bunch of people just ask questions. All right. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Finding myself. Oh my gosh. Bunch of y'all just ask questions. Holy cow. How in the world am I going to be able to keep up with all this? Oh my gosh. Like 40 more questions just came in. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> I'm really trying y'all. Okay. Okay. Oh, Arlene says, I got my 3776 Caracusa today. Wrong nib, but I decided abroad to be okay and it's so smooth. Ah, did we send the wrong nib or did, was the wrong nib in the box? I'm so sorry either way. That is crazy. We will definitely make that right if you want. But if you like the broad, I'm a huge fan of that broad too. So maybe try that out since you already got it. See if you like it. But we are at the point now where if you do have something that's wrong, like we, we have returns are open again, we will try to expedite those as much as we can. It's not going to be, you're not going to have those long of a wait, hopefully to get something corrected as you would if you had just a regular order because we're trying to balance those out too. Anyway, hey dear. I don't know where Ellie went. I thought she was over the, okay. She might be, she went to put a bunch of necklaces on me and then said, I haven't even begun yet. So she might be gathering things. It's 9.30, we need to get our daughter to bed. Anyway, all right. Uh, Mark says, any idea when the Monteverdi Ritma is coming in? So we've already gotten them in. And so I guess now we're just waiting on replenishments. So I, I have no idea when and where. It depends on which one you're asking for maybe because I don't know which ones are out. We should have stock as well. I guess a bunch of them sold through. I don't really know. Don't have an exact answer, but they, they should be shipping. They're open. They're on, on order. So um, there you go. Let's see here. All right. You can make an I Survived the COVID-19 Penpocalypse sticker for later. We thought about that. Thought about that. I don't know. We're still knocking that around. Um, Survivor Guy says, I have a Visconti traveling inkwell. However, it lives in my house. As I'm afraid of spilling it in my notebook case, any ideas on what to do if worst case scenario were to happen or to prevent it? I mean, I have been carrying around my Visconti traveling inkwell quite haphazardly in my backpack, in my you know, cargo shorts, pocket, whatever, in my pen case, I've never had a leak, never had a leak. I'm not going to say that you couldn't. You definitely want to make sure that thing is, the cap is secure on there, but I've had mine for five years now um, and never had a problem. So you do whatever makes you feel comfortable, but I don't think you have to be quite as paranoid about what might happen with that. Um, if that is the case, the, um, you know, another alternative is, is, um, you know, just keep it in a, zip, a Ziploc bag or something, and then you can still carry it around with you. And if you do happen to get a leak, it would be contained. Oh my gosh, Ellie. Did your mommy come and find you? She wants you to go to bed soon. I will. So go ahead and dress me up for the next minute and then you can go to bed, okay? Oh, I like that flower. Do you like this flower? Oh, I like that one too. You look like Mickey Mouse. I do look like Mickey Mouse. Here are a few questions for you to answer. Questions for me to answer? I already have the pen and the questions written. Look down. at you. Okay. 
It's not a fountain pen. They might get some criticism on that, but that's okay. This is a fountain pen crowd here, but that's all right. I don't care because I don't have any fountain pens anyway. Yes, you do. You just don't have any in your room. No. Not in my room. Okay. Please. All right. Well, I dress you up. This is adorable, Ellie. What were the early days of the GPC like? That's what Ellie asked me. The first question there. So she's uh, asking me a nice little interview question. What were the early days of the GPC like? Well, Ellie, you were there for some of those early days. You just don't remember it. Um, it was not that unlike what we're doing right now. We would work out of our house. We would talk about pens. We did a lot of live video broadcasts back then. Um, we would shoot a lot of videos. We were taking pictures. We were shipping products to customers. It, uh, it felt not that different than it does right now. We just had a much smaller team. So we had to do a lot ourselves. Whereas now we have a team to help. Oh my gosh, this is a lot of headbands, Ellie. They're not fitting on my head anymore. <laughs> this one is. I think we had too oh, many headbands. Have break they won't. They I might. I have a big head. These okay. ones are the biggest ones I have. Okay, Ellie's second question is, how do you like your customers? How do you like your customers? And I just want to show it to you all because it's very adorably written. How do you like your customers? Um, I like our customers a lot, Ellie. They're very understanding and supportive and caring. They have been very patient with us and throughout this entire put, thing. And they don't put a bunch of things in your hair. They don't, but you know, I feel like if they were here, they might because they probably find it very entertaining. Yes, it this is. This looks like I'm wearing a bonnet. Oh. This is a very interesting look that I have going on here. <laughs> don't forget the flower. These are great questions, Ellie, so thoughtful. So thoughtful. Did you just write those while you were upstairs? Yes. That's very sweet. All right. Let's see here. Um, I got so many questions, Rachel. I'm like drowning in questions. I, I, I cannot keep up with them. You, you want to scoot in here? Or are you all set to yeah. join in? Okay. Maybe we need to get her situated first. Okay. One last wow. Thing. You literally clipped everything that you brought in that bucket on my head. Well, you can't see. Well, Brian, turn around. There's a bunch of those. That are in the back here. <laughs> so that is also happening? Yep. <laughs> Alright, Ellie, can you leave quietly and then I'll come help you out? Thank you, Ellie. Thank you for visiting me and asking me good questions. And you get a pretty good headband. Awesome. No, you get one. Okay, now I'll scoot in here and make room for Rachel. You get one headband because everything else is on. Yes. Yeah. You have a couple of new pens to show you. I do have a couple new pens to show you all, too. I don't know that we'll be able to keep these on the whole broadcast, but we'll try. Let's do it. All we right. Can. So we need to answer some questions. It's been very active. I've been answering a lot of questions. I've been very rapid firing. There's just there's just a lot of questions. I mean, oh look at gosh. all these. Yeah, everybody's oh very, my gosh, Brian. very active. It's a, it's a, I'm a lost cause, Rachel, at this point. I don't know what you've done or haven't done. All right. We're just going to. Thoughts on using red ink in a higher end pen? I already answered that. Well, go for it. All right, so yep. color you want. <laughs> <laughs> I said. Okay, I scrolled up too far. Okay. All right, let's see. Let me find back where we were. Is that a wig? No. Um, let's see here. Da -da 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 -da. Would a Lystrom 1917 notebook fit in the Galen Leather notebook folio? Yes, 100%. the one we sell definitely fits the Lystrom. 100%. Yep. In fact, you got some extra space in there. How long are we taking to ship out? I'm sure you talked about shipping, but... I did. I say we're, you know, maybe a month behind at this point. Yeah. I think we'll catch up by mid-June at this point, not late June. Um, maybe even earlier. We'll see. What's your favorite sepia ink? I haven't used a lot of sepia Shipments recently. Shipments are going out seven days a week. I don't know if we have pickups every day, but we are shipping seven days a week. Yeah, now. we don't have pickups every day, but we have people working in there. The Sailor Riallo. Um, we are looking to order it. Um, question for you guys actually about the Riallo. So there's a 1911 version and a Pro Gear version. Which one would you be interested in purchasing you from us? You can only have one. So we, we, don't know if, we don't know if we're going to do both. There's three colors in the 1911 Riallo and two in the Pro Gear Riallo. Um, and it's a bit more expensive. It's going to be in, you know, the 400 some dollar price point. So it for us, seven nib sizes times all those things. It's, times it's, all those colors big, with two different formats, the Pro Gear and the 1911. It's a investment. So I want to make sure it's, you know, what someone would like to purchase. So the Riallo, for those who aren't familiar, is a piston version. It's so, the only Sailor Piston pen that 
we have in the U.S. So the 1911 the or the Pro Gear, like the L or the, you know, whatever, but with a piston. So if you're interested, put it in the comments. Let us know. Um, yes. But we are looking to order them soon. I'm willing to bet the feedback is going to be entirely split and we're going to have to, I have to order all five. Yeah. That's probably the case. But we we're just want to see if there's like a clear front runner on that pen so that we can start out with that one and then maybe ease into the second one. Well, different inks feather differently on the same paper. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. It's 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 a lot about the ink, but it's about the ink and paper relationship for sure. Yeah. And it's not like one brand versus another brand. It's really color specific. Absolutely. All right, um, Jake, I bought a really nice pen today. It can write underwater and in space and many other fine words. That's and not a question. Congratulations. I've been reading just literally um, everything. So congratulations on that. Um, okay, Brenda, can you tell me what pen comes with a stub nib? Uh, a lot bunch of them stub or italic a lot of times we actually called, um if you go on fountain pens then the, the main menu and you can click on italic and stub nib fountain pens i have them all there for you the website will tell you everything that we offer that's the best thing because mm -hmm. otherwise we'd be here for 20 minutes um is a quaco all sport or the quaco sport better for a student quaco sport the all sports heavy it's much more expensive um the classic sport is going to be and the skyline and all those, it's going to be yeah. lighter. It's way cheaper. You can buy like four of those for the price of an all sport. And because it's uh, plastic instead of metal, you can actually eyedropper convert it and you can carry a lot of ink in that pen. So Thoughts that is better to me. Scented inks. Are they really anything special? Um, most of the scented inks that we sell and have encountered pretty much are more for the person writing with it. So you can smell it um, like from the bottle and you can smell it in your pen, but once it hits the paper, it doesn't really last. So if you're sending a letter for it to be scented, you're better off like spraying perfume or, or something on it. So it's more for you for the pleasure of while you're writing with it. Yeah. So it's really kind of a novelty. Monty Winfield, Highwater, Linen Carbon ever coming back in stock. I've been waiting five months. Yeah. Um, so they've so had some we. production setbacks. Um, they're hoping to... Um, they, he is hoping to get going again this summer. Um, it could go into the fall, but we are, That's we a, are waiting patiently, you know, and a number of number of personal setbacks that have, that have delayed that. So it's, it's unfortunate, but a lot of, a lot of empathy and love his way. Yeah, definitely. Um, what a, a lot of personal stuff. So we're not going to get into it because I don't think it's like it's pu personal, public to but, share. Um, but, um, the, the, yeah. When, when you deal very, with small, small manufacturers, it's very it's legitimate. Easy reasons, to have setbacks. Legitimate hardships. Yeah. Would a brand like Moon Man ever be considered by Goulet? Should they be able to keep up with your sale and demand requirements? Um, yeah, I would be interested. I don't know who distributes Moon Man. I haven't been able to find that information um, and make sure the price and everything is right. Um, if I can figure out who to contact, I will contact them. But I don't know who to reach out to. Yeah. It's hard with some of these brands out of China and Japan. And like, you know, I try to use Google Translate and stuff like that. But like sometimes I just don't like communication. Really I can tough. see like a retailer, but getting to like the distributor or the manufacturer level, um, it's yeah. not necessarily public available information. Well, it's, it's my understanding without deeply knowing these companies well, companies like Moon Man, Pen BBS, these other ones we get asked about, a lot of them are not, they're not like full companies. It's like, you know, a couple of people maybe that are working with an OEM manufacturer who's who's making these pens. So there isn't really like a distribution chain, so to speak, you know, and just because of the way that it gets distributed through whatever uh, direct sales online, sales from China or whatever, you know, it's a brand and people start posting about it. And it's like, oh, I want this brand. But it's really just a, it's really a pen that somebody just worked with a factory to design. And there's not like a whole support structure for retailers and stuff to carry globally. But some, you know, if we've seen some competitors with it, it it's, possible. it's possible. We also don't know what the margins possible. are and things like that. I don't know. Um, will we carry Faber Castell again? Maybe I'm open to it. I'm I'm kind of seeing like what new things they come out with, and um, you know we're still in communication, so mm -hmm. um, it's possible, but um, not on the immediate horizon. Yeah. Uh, what was the most expensive pen that you wrote or saw? Huh. Uh, well, the Namiki Seven Gods was a whole set. That was a whole set, which that was a forty-eight thousand dollars set. We have a video on divided that. by seven pens. Is still it's still up there. It's still up there. But the single most expensive individual pen, I think, was oh the Emperor like goldfish. The the goldfish or the um it's like 15, the golden yeah. golden rose was eighteen thousand. Like fifteen 000. eighteen thousand, yeah. yeah. So Namiki. That's the most expensive. Um, any new Robert Oster inks coming soon? Um, I haven't heard. Um, probably <laughs> he's always coming out with something. Um, how um, is my Animal Crossing Island coming along? Have I found the fountain pen set yet? It's coming along. 
Um, my second bridge is under construction and I have some visitors moving in now. I have my campsite going. Um, I have not got the fountain pen set, but I did get the cartoonist set, which is like a dip pen set. It's a little bit different. So I'll keep my eye out for the fountain pen set. I thought you showed set. it to me. Maybe you showed me a picture of somebody else. I showed you a picture. I have the cartoonist set, but I haven't gotten the fountain pen set uh -huh. yet. Okay. It was really cute for my birthday this weekend. Like they threw me a little surprise party and I got like this whole <laughs> birthday table and I got like cupcakes and it was really adorable That's and I felt cool. really special. That's pretty cool. Um, yes, Brian does wear cargo shorts. I'm yes. wearing them right now. Yes. I'm not even joking. Shall I prove it? I love cargo shorts. There you go. Look at all this cargo. <laughs> and I'm using it. I got my phone in here, <laughs> right over here. My love, phone is currently the only, only cargo in the cargo pockets of my cargo shorts. I love in that, like the video of like the ADD stuff of like, you know, tips for ADD people, how they don't like leave their stuff around like number one, cargo shorts. Cargo shorts. Like, yep, yeah. That's right. Love me some cargo shorts. Oh my goodness. As well as owning like 12 pairs of sunglasses and chapstick. Man, there's some of that stuff I just leave everywhere. Oh boy, we are. Oh, we're oh, just, we're, 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 we're beyond, I'm stuff. taking this out of my hair now. We're getting lost beyond hope at this point in the questions. I do have a couple of pens that I actually wanted to show rather than just answering random questions about cargo shorts and hair what prompted him to start turning fountain pens um it was a personal interest but but pens specifically like i think you were just looking for something you could do that was small enough but you weren't like ooh, pens like it was inspired by constraints um <laughs> sometimes that is honestly the best way to get creative is when you are constrained i had a passion for woodworking i was watching the new yankee workshop with norm abram and i really wanted to build this like oversized antique looking furniture and we were living in an apartment at the time in a covered balcony and i was like well i'm not building any furniture on a balcony i was like what could i possibly build that's like small enough and quiet enough and cheap enough <laughs> to do on our balcony and lo and behold out of the entire like grizzly tools and to catalog which is like 900 pages or something crazy it's not that thick 300 pages i think there's like two pages of pen turning stuff and that's what i honed in on and i bought some and the rest is history. Um, someone's <laughs> back to Animal Crossing. Um, I don't have any friends. I don't actually know how to make friends. So I would be happy to be. <laughs> you don't have any friends. <laughs> like Nintendo friends. Like, and I have a, I have like our Nintendo pretty locked down because of the kids. But when yeah. I play, I can turn the parental controls off and, you know, make friends. Um, if you could just send me a DM on Facebook and like help me, I'd be happy to be friends with you with Animal Crossing. Um, so a question about what is your, your personal single most used pens in your collections? Ooh. Um, I'm currently writing with my arrow, my diplomat arrow a lot. Um, beyond that, the eco is, is my go-to for sure. Yeah. It's like that, that's my most used. But you cycle through a bunch of different colors. I do. I have an Elmo I'm working on as well. Oh yeah. With the eco, I have a bunch of, bunch of colors. Oh yeah. Homo sapiens. I put a lot of miles on. Lamy 2000, Pilot Vanishing Point. Um, Pilot Custom 74. I put a lot of mileage on the pens that I talk about the most. Um, but really, I cycle through a lot of pens. Um, right now, I've been digging, you know, obviously, we got Sailor recently. I've been getting new Sailor really well. I have a Sailor King of pens that I bought in Japan when I went last year. That's a blue with clear ends that you that was only sold in Japan. And I saw it and I was like, this was, you know, long before we ever knew that we would carry Sailor again. But I saw it and I was like, I have to get that pen. So I've been using that one recently because I love it. Given the option, would you get a Pilot Custom 74 or 92, or would you stretch for a Sailor Pro Gear or 1911 standard? Um, I think it depends on, depends on what the type of style. mid experience you want. I'm, I'm just so partial to the Custom 74 because it was my first golden pen. I, I love, love that the broad way, nib. I love the way it writes. The nib is a little springier. It's a little smoother. So I do lean a little bit towards that one. But obviously there's a lot going on with the sailors. The styling is a little bit different. I like the overall look of the sailor better. Honestly, the custom 74 is not honestly my favorite looking pen, um, but I love the way that it writes. So it's, it's a tough split for me, but I'm just kind of partial to the custom 74. So I kind of still got to go that way. Um, let's see. Oh, I saw another question. Where did it go? Let me scroll up. 
Do we have plans to write a book about the Gilly Pen Company story? We've been talking about We've writing a book about for it. years. I'm like, I always say like, oh, there's more chapters to write. Like somehow I manage. <laughs> right, Michael, Michael Scott's Scott. book. We're rewatching The Office now in our downtime. Yeah. <laughs> Um, for sure. We talked about it. Got a couple of ideas thrown around. But... Yeah. I did see the pen addicts like with the animal crossing channel. And that's when I quickly realized like how behind everyone I am. Cause I just got the game like a week and a half ago. So I'm like very noob. I'm like, don't visit me. I don't have a lot of stuff. I don't even know how to like share hey. recipes and stuff. Hey, as welcoming as we are to newbies in this community, <laughs> Please be I, welcoming think, to me with animal crossing. I think everybody would be so welcoming to you. Don't worry about that. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm an Animal Crossing noob. Yeah. So anyway, Bri, as far as writing a book, yes, but we're not actively writing anything right now. No. We've thought about it. We're like halfway. Someday. I mean, we're still in the early chapters, you know. Yeah. Uh, Prussian Blue. So um, the five, I imagine we're talking about the Twisby 580 ALR. Prussian Blue is yeah. launching a week from Friday on the 29th. I don't have one to show you because um, we haven't gotten we haven't it in seen yet. It yet. But um yeah, it's an ALR. It's almost a year ago that the purple one came out, as I noticed, because I was looking at our calendar of product launches and stuff. So it's been a year mm -hmm. since we've had a new ALR. It's been very popular. I don't love the texture. Some people really like the texture. I'm really picky, and I just don't like the... I think mm -hmm. don't love the texture is a bit of a positive spin on it. You absolutely hate the feel of that. I like, do. You cannot stand like the ridges no, on that. Grid. But I really love that color. So I'm really torn because like, I want to like it. I want to like it, I get but it. I don't, I don't like texture. Like, I I'm, get it. yeah. So, um, but you I don't know, mind it. I like it. I don't mind it at all. I don't know what else to say, but I don't know how limited the first shipment is. I don't know no, I how don't. We know very little about this pen. it'll be. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So. Do I ever buy from retail? Do we ever buy from retailers, like competitors who have pens that we don't personally carry? Um, years ago. Yeah. When we first started out, like I remember placing a jet pens order. Like I got the, like early the pilot on. petite one and I may or may not have like ordered refills for it from jet pens since then. But, um, for the most not part, like on a regular. for the most part, there aren't a lot of brands that we don't carry that I would want enough to pay full price for, I guess. I don't know. Like we have access to so many pens. So I don't really feel like I'm missing out on anything. I have bought full price pens at pen shows, um, like from like custom manufacturers. Like I have a, a Yoshi pen, um, mm -hmm. you know, the yeah. 18, one, 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 what? It, wait, eight, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like that I love. And that was the most expensive pen I've ever paid for. Um, and so, you know, we will from time to time. Or you, you've you bought like um, past limited editions or things that like you can't uh, really get anymore. Yeah, that's not really from retailers so much. That's more like eBay or just all people that contact me that are like, hey, I have But we definitely buy pens that pen. we don't sell for sure. I had somebody that reached out to me about a Lamy 2000, like an original version of a Lamy 2000 that had like the L logo on the top of the Lamy mm. 2000, but he wanted like $500 for it. And I was like, uh... I have a bunch of Lamy 2000s already and like, it's like a historical thing, but it's also like $500 for just a pen with an L on it. So I passed. Um, I, I do have constraints sometimes, sometimes. The difference between a nib being, having feedback and being scratchy, is it subjective? Yeah, that is subjective. That is subjective. I My delineation of, of when I say something is scratchy, is if it has that feeling of feedback, but it's inconsistent. Cutting so paper. Like, well, cutting paper is bad. <laughs> that's a little too <laughs> much the feedback. time to like straight up misalign. Yeah, that's that's going to cause it to be scratchy. But to me, feedback is if it feels consistent, like it feels consistently resistant as you're writing in every direction. If it's scratchy, then it's usually going to be more feedback in one direction than the other. That usually means there's a misalignment or a grind that was improper or something like that. That's when you. That's when I would really consider it to be scratchy. I don't consider something to be scratchy if it's consistent because then it, it might just be not ground as smooth as you prefer. It doesn't necessarily mean it's scratchy. But anyway, I just completely made that up. So. Wait, you made up the word scratchy? No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Just now. Honk. You've never heard it before. Beep. 
Do Bluey. The, <laughs> Bluey. Yeah. Do the various Edison special editions you have still get made, or do you just have them until they run out? Like, do I need to jump on a Nouveau Premier Delphinium, or will it still be around? So some of our some of our Edisons are regular. They, they continue to be produced. So, like, the Delphinium is now in the regular line. Um, so we keep ordering that every week or whenever we reorder. If it's a seasonal edition, um, sometimes those restock, sometimes they don't. We usually try to say, like, this will not be restocked once we're down to the final uh, material. So I believe the winter editions, the last one we did, um, we still have stock. I think we can still get more. Um, we haven't planned our next one yet. COVID kind of got in the way, but yeah. There you go. As, as your unofficial fan person, I will read a book to all the fans. Uh, that book's a, book? a little long for what we... No, I'm just reading a page. One page? Okay. Yes. What's the title of the book? The Worst Book Ever. The Worst Book Ever. Any of you have young kids, you may be familiar with this book. Maybe not. It's pretty entertaining. How would you... Tra la 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 la. Also, it's not very clean in here. Did the illustrator make this book on our lunch break? Ugh, sounds about right. I just stepped in something sticky. Oh, yum, cookie crumbs. <laughs> so it's a whole book that's kind of like common. cooking fun at cooking how fun badly at, it's written and illustrated. And like oh, the names the change back. and the plot is inconsistent and they kind of poke fun at it. And the characters oh, are like, wait a minute, this plot line doesn't carry through at all. This doesn't make any sense. Who wrote Ooh, this look, thing? Here's some comments. Do not buy this book. I repeat, do not buy this book. The nice journal that is nice. I can't believe I wasted my time reading this. The weekly wind bag. Now I have to go wash my eyes with soap. The hey, independent Hi. Telegram Tribune Gazette Bulletin Post. If I had to choose Here's between reading this again or having my teeth knocked out with a jackhammer, I would choose the second really option. The horse is now. All right. We need to finish answering people's questions. Oh, there's lots of mistakes in here. It says, okay, I look it's hot. almost 10 o'clock. So yeah. we, you guys need to go to bed. And we need to finish answering some questions. Now. It says, I love hamburgers. Good. Good. I think good rest will help tonight. All right, guys. We need, to, we need to finish our video. Yeah, I feel all better right now. I think you'll feel even more all better in the morning. If that's possible. He's right. catching on to me on that one. Okay. It's it's getting pretty <laughs> late, so we'll try to wrap it up It here. is getting late. I actually had pens I wanted to show, though. Go ahead and show the pens. I'm going to show the pens. We'll go light on the questions, but... Um, First one I have, so I just picked this up. I just went to the office yesterday for the first time in a little while. Um, I got one of the new uh, green teal, teal, teal green, green um, platinum plaisirs. There's also a black one that we've already sold out of. So that was hard. Almost. Seeing them on the shelf and then I had to let it go. Um, anyway. They are reserved. Yes. <laughs> so they're there, but they are not available to me. So I had to leave those, but uh, I did grab one of the green ones. It's really nice teal color. Really nice teal. Almost like it matches my mm. thermos that I carry in Rob. A little bit greener than my it thermos, but it's pretty close. Nice color though. Very nice. It's got that like anodized aluminum type of thing, kind of like a little bit of a matte finish to it. Same Shiny nib is like the preppy and prefonte and all that, but it's yeah. all aluminum. The nibs are really Converter separate. The nibs are really consistent, but it's a great nice quality pen. Nibs. Seals great. I mean slip and seal. This is a really good student pen too, in my opinion. Um the other ones that I have are moving on up in price. Completely on the other end of the spectrum. We're but gonna jump similar, similar colors. We're gonna jump way up in price, but I have the Visconti Homo sapiens blue lagoon to show. So cool box. So they've been changing up these boxes on these limited editions, um, which are pretty nice. Gosh, glare everywhere. Okay, there we go. So you can see it's got the pen kind of chilling behind this little glass window, which is cool. Um, and then I wanted to show you it's hefty too. Like the box feels very hefty. So it evokes quality. <laughs> Got a super crinkly plastic, which all the Visconti's come in. Um, and then loving the pen. So every pattern is going to be a little bit different. It has a solid cap and then and grip section in the, in the grip. And then the body is going to be a mixture of clear and kind of that turquoise swirl. So my particular that one tiny here. Marine would be a good match for this. Oh, it's an all-time fave of mine. Oh, no. So that might just have to happen. Um, super good one. I love the hook safe lock on these. The just the the limited edition Homo sapiens with that resin. It's just so smooth with hook safe. Really great. It's got the double reservoir, higher ink capacity than your typical Homo sapiens. 
That is a good question. Do you guys have the funds to include a free converter with any pen that doesn't already come with one? How would that work logistics wise? So like this is a good example of one that doesn't come with a converter. So the answer is sometimes. Um, there are several pens that we do out of our own pocket include a converter with. Um, that includes all of the Platinum 37 and 76 centuries that mm -hmm. um, you may or may not have noticed don't come with a converter anymore, which in our opinion, something over $100 really should, really should really especially should. over $200. So the way it works logistically is whenever we order a pen, we <laughs> order a converter, we deduct the converter out of our stock and deduct the cost and we physically put it inside the pen and mm. make it for sale. It's a significant cost because we have to pay for the converter. We have to pay for the shipping and everything else to get labor, it there. We have to pay labor to put it all in there and it's a lot of extra stuff. So it's, now it's a pen, not an insignificant cost for a us A pen do. that's in the $20 or less range, um, unfortunately we don't have any margin to absorb that. So um, we would have to raise the price of the pen to include the converter basically. Yeah. So uh, we can't um, if the price is lower, but for the more expensive ones, we do decide to absorb that margin because we just feel it should be done. Yep. Um, I saw this question twice. Will we carry the Monte Verde giant Sequoia pen again? Um, maybe. We, it, I mean, we've talked about this before. It's a little harder to launch new products right now. There is a really pretty new turquoise color that mm -hmm. we did like. Um, so maybe this summer I could see, I could see revisiting that. I was just asking how much is the discount um, Do you remember the top of Yeah, 920. So it's 1150 MSRP. We sell for 920. Um, so it's, up, 18, it's up there in 18 karat gold nib, uh, double reservoir, power filler, all that good stuff. It's a nice pen. Yeah. Um, I love the Homo sapiens. What nib did you get? Medium? I got a medium on this one. Yeah. yeah. I have a fine in several other pens. Now so to medium. go up in price a little bit more. Yes. This is, well, I got kind of a uh, Holy Grail pen here. I mean, believe me, the Visconti is a Holy Grail pen as well. So we're having a Holy Grail fest here today. This is the Pelican M1000 Green Ray. So I've never had an M1000 before. Not exactly that this is like the time to be splurging, but basically we've had our eyes on the M1000 for six years, five, six years, and just haven't had one that's come out that's really spoken to us before until this one. So this is a gorgeous pen and couldn't resist. So I'll take we'll call it your uh, birthday, Father's Day gift. This will be my birthday gift for like the next 10 years. How about that? So nice golden textured cardboard box, very Japanese inspired because the pen is just covered in abalone shell rotten. So it's got nice packaging there. It's a limited edition numbered. Got some brochures. Um, nice wooden box. This what? wood is Polonia wood, if you're familiar with that. Um, it's very light wood. It's a hard wood. Um, it's very, very light. Um, and then, the dun, pen itself dun, dun, dun. comes cradled in here nicely, and then I'll just go ahead and pull it out. So I, I do not have an M1000 up to this point, even though we've used them, we've sold them for, we've never had one. So the green ray, it is basically just oh boy, this covered is not in rotten. Tough. There we go. There we go. I just got to get the angle right. It's going to look worse here than you'll have anywhere else you'll ever see it. <laughs> it's basically just covered, and these are solid strips of rotten. I mean. Yeah, solid all the way through the cap, all the way down the body. Now, because it's got coats of Yurishi lacquer, it does bulge up just a little bit. It's not like flush. Like normally, the the it's very, very straight and flush, but obviously they built up all that lacquer. So they do coats of Yurishi lacquer, <laughs> they do the rodden, and then they do Yurishi lacquer on top of it. So you can see the layers of thickness that it has on it, but um, it looks absolutely stunning. Yes, we pay our costs on this. Yes. One of the perks of the job. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, huge nib. The Pelican M1000 nib is massive. Um, let's see if I can show For a firm, when you comparison. do the payment option, when do you start making your payments? Um, I believe it is after the first month. So you can, if you do like a three month plan, um, you don't pay up front and then you pay it one month, two month, three month. If you do the 12 month, same thing, um, but you don't pay for a month. There you go. That's my understanding. So just give you an idea of the size of the nib on yeah. M1000. It's huge. So this is a Visconti Homo sapiens, which is approximately a number six size nib. So this is more like a number eight size nib. Mm -hmm. And then you got your little platinum preppy size nib down here. <laughs> so it's big. Like $20, $900, several thousand. Mm, many thousand. So it's <laughs> not for the faint of heart, but for the faint of wallet. But it is a 
absolutely stunning pen. Absolutely stunning pen. So very honored to have this in my hands. Thank you, dear. So there you go. You waited like 10 years or something like this. You know? We'll call it your 10th anniversary. It's like the worst, birthday, it's like the worst time in the world to justify something like this, but just being real. That's where we're at. So it's 10 o'clock now. We've been broadcasting for an hour, and I think uh, we should let the good people go to bed, including ourselves. <laughs> Unless you're in a different time zone, then it's not bedtime. Then uh, maybe you shouldn't go to bed, or maybe you still could. What, what is time now anyway, right? Like time is fluid. I don't know what day of the week it is. I don't know what month it is. Our kids are not in bed. Yeah, they're totally not in bed, I'm sure. We're doing our best. That's right. Anyway, thank you all for joining us. Had a great time. Sorry, um, it's late. Yeah, that's all right. I wouldn't still be here if you didn't want to be, right? <laughs> so anyway, um, thank you all very much. Your support means the world to us. Um, very much enjoying getting to spend this time with you. Oh, Susan asked, what are you going to ink the pelican with? I don't know. We got the moonstone ink, the new pelican ink, so that could be work. But I don't know. Get all kinds of options with a rod and pen. Some really pretty. Haha. Ha. Should put haha ha in it. Would that be like a mm. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, people are starting to get their shipments. They're getting to experience like the magic of haha. Ha. That's right. There you go. You're very welcome. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see you guys later. Right on. <laughs>